I'm Jerry Ford. Welcome to my studio. I've been busy making up designs for you guys. Why? Because I love to digitize. I love embroidery. I love to sew, to quilt, you name it. I, I love it. I've been an educator for a baby lock dealer for 20 years, so I'm pretty well versed in all of things baby lock and brothers. So I've come up with this thing. Uh, beginners love to do in the hoop stuff and they love mug rugs. They're quick, they're easy. So I've come up with this. This is my rug mug of the month series. So I will be putting this out the first of every month for 2023. This is January's. Okay, and it's just a simple mug rug. So if you would like a copy of the written instructions for this particular mug rug and the PES file, now I digitize in PES using the palette or the Brilliant software. So if you would like that, I've tested it in PES. And I've had lots of my students test this in PES, so I know they work in PES. I'm not familiar with other machines, nor have my designs been tested on other machines. You are welcome. Any machine can use these. This is going to take a 5x7 frame. Some of them are even smaller, 4x4, but a 5x7 is what most of these, these designs are, or most of these mug rugs are. So if you're interested, send me an email at waltzquilt at yahoo.com and I will be happy to send you the written instructions and the embroidery designs in PES format. Now if you use another format, uh, let me know. I can try. I don't guarantee. I can convert them with my software to whatever format you use or your software can also, most software can convert other formats into whatever their machine uses. Uh, let me know. Like try it out January's. Send me an email. I'll be happy to send you the design. If you want the other months, then send me an email saying, hey, just add me to the Rug Mug of the Month Club uh, mailing list, and I'll be happy to send you the written instructions, the PES design, and a link to the video that's on YouTube that shows how to stitch this out. So how, these are so much fun. So let's get started. Okay, for this project, you're going to need your 5x7 hoop. I recommend that you use a dissolve away mesh stabilizer. This is, uh, this will completely dissolve in water. You need to have a piece of batting about six, six inches by six inches or bigger. And you're going to need about six different pieces of, of blue fabric varying from uh, a dark to a medium so you need and you need at least one piece big enough that will fit on the back of the hoop which is about six inches by six inches you're going to need a uh, embroidery bobbin thread you're going I'm going to use white to construct it uh, I'm going to use also a dark blue but the colors are up to you um, and then I want to have the dark blue I'm going to do the outer border with this uh, dark thread so therefore I need to wind a bobbin the same color uh, using the same color and then I'm going to try to use some blue metallic thread in order to do that background stippling. It'll be also helpful if you had some T-pins and I'll show you why. Uh, and it's also helpful to have a curved embroidery scissor, a small one like this. It makes it easier to trim. Okay and of course your design on your machine. So we're going to hoop just the stabilizer. So I'm just going to put the make the stabilizer bigger than what I need. And I'm going to tighten it as much as I can. And realize with this, it's almost impossible to tighten it enough because what happens is this. As, as it starts to stitch the forces even though I've got that really tight, they're still pulling this inside. So I want that to be more stable. And I do this whenever I have any kind of freestanding lace or anytime I am just hooping the stabilizer. This is the secret to keeping it from, from uh, being drawn in. So I just take these T-pins and put them in the edges of the hoop. 
see where these two these two ends come together I'll show you get a few more pins and I'm going to put them about an inch apart see I just want it to pierce just the stabilizer and what this is good for is it doesn't allow this to be pulled in no matter how hard I pull on it it does not pull beyond this outer edge so this will actually help some of the distortion uh, or the, and the registration problems that you have with hooping when you, especially when you're only hooping your just the stabilizer and um, you don't have to do it at the top or the bottom because most of the stresses are from side to side so I'm just going to do this on both sides and then we're ready to start stitching I've loaded my design into my embroidery machine and I have noticed that it's got uh, it'll take about 27 minutes to stitch I currently have this stitching at 600 stitches per minute rather than the fastest it would go simply because I think you get a better product especially if you're dealing with satin stitches then you, you, it's better to stitch at a slower speed so I'm going to hit set and this first color stop is going to give me the position of the very first piece because this is basically foundation piecing that we're going to be doing okay so I've just got my hoop with the stabilizer only and let it stitch out the position of the first piece piece of fabric on here that covers all of the stitching lines and yes I'm going to use the dark just so that it's easier for you to see I would normally put a lighter thread on here got that stitched all the way around I want to cut away approximately a quarter of an inch away from this stitching line it does not have to be accurate And what we did was just the second color stop and that essentially tacked it down the first color stop showed you where to place it the second one is showing you where to position it and it tacks down the top the third color stop is going to show you the placement for the next piece what this did is it showed you the placement of the entire piece that's going down next and it's giving you a placement line on where you want it to stitch so this is going to have to cover the entire piece and you want to at least put it up to this line that was stitched right here if you're not sure if it's going to fit fold this over where you're planning on putting it you know this is going to be your next next stitching line so if you put this out there and it covers all of that stitching you know it's fine and you can just flip it back straighten it out and now stitch that seam and this is color stop number four which is going to stitch down the seam 
if you've done too much, if you, you've left too big of a seam allowance, you can always cut this back. It's going to be inside, really, who's going to see it. Okay. You fold this over onto the seam and finger press it down. Just take your nail and give it a good crease and spread that out. Now it's going to do the tack down on the outside of this piece. Again, I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch seam allowance around everything that's stitched. And where's the top? Here's the top here. It'll trim up later so you don't have to be exact. Okay. Now this is showing you the placement of piece number three and this is its stitching line this is its placement so again I'll take another piece of fabric it will fit I want to make sure it'll fit so I'll fold that over put that on that stitching line still fitting lining it up with this inside line. Okay. And color stop number seven is going to seam this piece. Okay, so now it's it's seamed this piece. I'm going to fold this over and set it down. Fold it over and then I'm going to do color stop number eight, which is going to tack down the outside of this piece. Next, I'm going to trim about a quarter of an inch outside, somewhere around it, three-eighths. Doesn't have to be exactly a quarter. We're going to do careful trimming after it's all done with the stitching. Okay. Next, color stop number nine is going to give you the um, placement for the next piece, which is piece number four. See if this will fit. It does. This is a big piece. <laughs> so, but still, I'm just going to lay this raw just together, just like you're doing a seam. And then stitch it. Color stop number 11 is going to tack down this piece. 
straighten this out. I'm going to finger press it. It's a big piece, I know. <laughs> It'll work. 11, it's color stop number 11 is going to tack down the edges. Again, I'm going to trim the excess away. All right. Color stop number 12 is going to give me the placement for piece number five. Again, just show you a little closer. I have two lines. I have the outer line, which is where the placement of the next piece. This is where I'm going to line this fabric up so that it'll. So if I line that right sides together, that puts that piece into the correct position. Okay. I'm just going to hold it. <laughs> If you're not comfortable holding it, you can tape it or use like a spatula or something to hold it down. Okay. This is covering everything. So color stop number 14 is going to tack down this next to last piece. trim off the excess. Okay. And for number 15, it's going to give me the placement to the last foundation piece. This does not matter if you put it on straight grain or not. It's all going to be stippled in, so it really doesn't matter. Line up those edges right here. It's going to stitch the seam. And I'm just going to hold it still. this out. Finger press this in. Make it nice and smooth. Okay. And stitch. Color stop number 17. Now 
I'm going to trim this outside. And actually, we are done with the foundation piecing. There. That's trimmed away. So now, the next step is to do the stippling. And here's the hardest part, deciding what you want to stipple, what color you want to stipple this at. So I'm going to use this blue metallic. Anytime you are using metallic thread, because I love metallic thread, but it's a little tricky to work with sometimes. First of all, pick a good quality metallic thread. Don't try to use the cheap bargain stuff. You're going to end up with more grief. It's just not worth the aggravation. I always tell, every, tell my students that if you're paying less than $12 a spool for that thread, leave it alone. It's just got more nightmares than it's worth. Good quality thread is going to be a little more pricey. Any of the major brands are fine. The only one I really sort of object to <laughs> is Sulky in the small little spools. They're wound too tight for that and it ends up corkscrewing too much. So the Sulky thread that's the large spools of metallic are fine. The thin skinny ones, no, not so fine. <laughs> so, okay, uh, but I like Superior. I like Robeson Anton, Madeira, Isocord. All of those have very good Thread, metallic threads. The other thing is you want to use a metallic needle. Okay, so, oh, the other thing that I want to do while I'm here, because <laughs> next it's going to stipple. What I want to do is turn my hoop over and I want this batting to cover all of the stitching. Um, you can tape it if you like. I'm not a big fan of taping. So I'm going to pin it, but watch how I do this. I'm going to pin from this side, more than two sides. Okay, I'm not leaving those pins there because I can't see where they are, which means they can cause trouble. From this side, I'm going to take those pins out, and I know it's not going to stitch any closer than that. So this is well out of my stitching area. So is this place outside the stitching area. Take this pin out from underneath. I don't have to pin all four sides. You could just tape it if you like. Uh, I don't tend to use tape, but if you are using tape, tape tends to roll on the bed of the machine. So what you want to do is when you're putting it in, when you're putting your hoop in the machine, you're going to lift it from this side as you slide it in so that it doesn't roll the tape underneath and get stuck to the bed. When you're using metallic thread, you want to use a vertical spool pin. That way the thread comes off. There it is. It comes off from the top and it does, nothing is impeding it. It's coming out nice and soft. Of course, I've got it hooked into here and into here. I'm also using a metallic needle. If you don't have a metallic needle, Use a size 14 top stitch needle. The reason I like metallic needles is because the eye of the needle is coated in Teflon and is less likely to shred. I'm also going to slow the speed of my machine down. Okay, so I'll go over here. If you have a baby lock or a brother, you're going to go to your settings pages. I'm going to take this down to 350, the slowest speed it will go. Okay. I'm also going to take my tension, which is for right here, the thing with the X's and the scissors. Tension is normally 4.0. For metallic thread, I like to use 3.4. You're going to have to test your machine. Every machine's going to be different. Okay, alrighty. Uh, I think that's about it for metallic thread. Okay, so let's stitch it. And I'm probably going to speed this up because this is like watching grass grow. Okay, that took it back to the beginning. I use the plus or minus key to take it back to the beginning of the silver thread. Oh, wrong button. OK, 
Okay, you can see the silver a little better than the, than the uh, blue. So I want it just to have a little glint of something. So I'm going to let this stitch and I'll probably speed this up for you. instructions I believe I wrote it so that I did my stippling in white and I'm doing my the snowflake which is the next next uh, color stop I did that in metallic and actually for this one I just reversed it I think I want to do the snowflake in the white instead of the metallic okay now that I am no longer doing metallic thread what I'm going to do is I need to return this the uh, tension back to 4.0 so 4.0 here I'm going to go to my settings page which is right up here on this machine you're looking for the thing that looks like a piece of paper I'm going to return my speed to 600 or 700 is close enough okay and now I threaded it with the white thread and I'm going to go ahead and stitch these um, I don't have to have these pins in anymore. I can take those out. That way I don't have to worry about them coming loose and getting caught under the needle. And so I'm going to uh, stitch color stop number 19, which are the snowflakes. Again, I'm going to speed this up because this is like watching grass grow. That turned out wonderful. So now we're ready to put the backing on it. So what I'm going to do now is turn this over and do like we did before with the background fabric. And take it way out of the way and pin it up here. Like I said, I like to pin. I don't, I'm not crazy about tape. I have more problems with tape not wanting to stick and then I end up having to rip out and this time I'm going to put it on here fairly taut remember I'm pinning it temporarily from the back I'm going to move these okay come over here and now move the pins to the front so that I make sure Everything is way out of the way. Take the pin out from the back. This is way out of the way. Okay, so now I'm stitching color stop number 20 is actually going to seal all the layers together. So, stitch there. Now I want to do all my careful trimming. So from the top, I am going to trim this close. So to trim it close to the stitching, I'm going to give it a little tug. And using these curved scissors, I can get really close. See how close I can get. That's really close to that stitching. Okay. 
I'm going to stitch all, I'm going to probably remove it here just to get out of the way and trim all of this. Stay over here if you thought you hadn't gotten close enough. Put your hand underneath, push it up a little bit, then wedge it in, wedge your scissor in, and that way you can get a lot closer. Okay, I'm also going to remove the excess from the back as well. So I'll start here. I don't try, oh, there's a pin. And we remove our pins at this point. If you feel confident that you can get your batting at the same time, go ahead and do so. I can't. So I'm going to trim that one layer at a time. I know it's hard to see what I'm doing and I'm just, what am I cutting? There we go. A little too much fabric. And see, I can now cut the batting. So I cut a little bit of my stitching, so I'm not sure if that's going to catch. We'll find out, won't we? That's why you don't want to rush. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and trim the rest of this off camera because I can't trust myself to get close without cutting all the stitches. So I'm going to do that on off camera. Okay, I have trimmed carefully around. And here's the spot where I clipped a little too far in. But I think the zigzag on the, on the outside edge will be big enough to, to catch it. If not, you know, that's what fabric glue's for. Okay, now I have put the blue, dark blue bobbin thread in, and I've changed the needle to dark blue as well, and I'm ready to stitch this very last color stop. Okay. Again, I'm gonna speed this up too. Okay, all finished. All right, let's see how this looks. It caught. Lucky, <laughs> okay. All right, so we're gonna take these pins out. Put them back in the box. Okay, before I go and take it out, I want to trim this fairly close. I'm going to take my seam ripper, it's actually the easiest way, and just run that seam ripper, right? You got a nice sharp seam ripper, by the way. Not, not the ones that come with the machine. Those are not sharp. Take the ball and 
Now that wasn't so close. Or you could trim it away. I'll just take it out and do it the easiest way. Now you know you can save these because this is nothing but spun starch. So what you can do is cut them straight, get wash away thread, zigzag pieces together using the wash away thread in both the bobbin and in the needle. And usually out of two hoopings, that I can go ahead and get enough for a third. So if I would just take this and zigzag these together, and by the time I get another one, then I can zigzag and got another piece. Because this is the most expensive of all of the uh, stabilizers. So you want to be as economical as you can with it. The little tiny bits, what you can do is mix them with water. Put it in a little jar. If you want, don't want it to mildew, put it in the refrigerator. And then... Um, you can use that as a, like a starch. So when you want to, like if you're doing uh, applique and you're turning it, then you usually will starch it, you know, turn your seams and starch them down before you press them. Well, this is nothing but spray starch, or this is nothing but starch spun up. Okay, so now to get the little bits out. Okay, and now to dissolve the edges, take a Q-tip, dip it in some water, and just run along the edge and the stabilizer will dissolve. Now, if you get this too wet, what will happen is that it will not only dissolve, it'll crinkle up. In fact, if you're giving this as a gift, what I would do is, Im is immerse this in warm water, the whole thing, let it soak for about five minutes, take it out and let it dry. Because when dissolve away mesh gets wet, it shrivels. So somebody will have a coffee cup or a cold drink on here and before you know it, this whole mug rug is shriveling. Not a good presentation, I'm telling you. Let's see, see how it just completely dissolved away? And that way, after it's it's completely wet, let it dry for the most part, then press it and a little bit of spray starch to flatten it out, and it will be just fine. Now, <laughs> if you didn't clip it close enough, and you end up, let's see, yeah, see how I've got little teeny bits of batting showing through? Fabric markers are marvelous. Just car, just run that along the edge. I would do the fabric marker after I had soaked it. See there's a whole big spot right there that I didn't didn't clip close enough. But thank God for fabric markers. They do marvelous job. Okay and one more little bit here. Got it. Oh, missed this one. There. Finished. Now you're ready for a nice hot cup of cocoa. And you've got a beautiful mug rug. Okay? Like I said at the beginning of this video, that if you are interested in getting this design and the written instructions for free, then send me an email to waltzquilt at yahoo.com and it's on the, on the screen. Um, and I will be happy to send you the, the embroidery design in PES format because that's what I have. I've been a baby lock and brother instructor for 20 years. That's what I'm most comfortable with. Yes, my software will convert it to other formats, but I don't, I haven't tested it out in other formats. So this is best going to be, I know it's going to work on a PES machine, which is brothers and baby locks. Be sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so when you find out when I put out new videos. If you want to become a part of the Mug Rug Club, then send me an email telling me that you would like to subscribe to it. And next month, when February's design comes out, I will be happy to send it to you. 
leave any comments, send me any comments through email or in the comments section below, and I will see you guys next month. Bye. Keep warm.